yeah hi hello everyone this is shanmugaraj welcome to my channel uh, one of the aims of this channel is to build a global knowledge sharing platform uh, the domains of leadership agile and project management you can join me and help me with that either by subscribing to this channel or sharing my videos to our friends right so having said that let us get into today's topic we are currently discussing some of the leadership ideas from MIT Sloan School of Management. Today's topic is Think Big, Have a Mission Statement of Your Career. So this, this particular article has been published in MIT in Jan 2022, 2024. Why it matters when it, when it comes to your career and life, don't let your own self be the thing you are fighting the most. Year 2023 Women's Leadership Study from leanin.org and McKenzie and Co. found that American women held 40% of corporate management positions and women continue to fight under representation when it comes to board positions and CEO roles. They also face gender bias harassment and opposition to their management states. Here is how one MIT Sloan alumina has pushed back on this on those statistics and used what she's learned along the way to help those behind her. Jessica Halika is MBA in 2016, executive career and leadership coach. Previously, Galica was a consultant for Bain and Company and a marketing strategist for Apple. So let us look at some of the responses from Jessica. Given what you know now, what would you tell your younger self about being a woman in your industry? Think big. Assume there are no limits to our success when you are just starting out in your career it can be hard to dream big or see how to connect the dots forward time gives you the gift of seeing that those dots will connect one day and most likely you will achieve more than you thought possible i would encourage my younger self and all women to have more belief in their creativity, resourcefulness, and ability to achieve their goals. When it, when it comes to your career and life, don't let your own self be the thing you are fighting the most. Second question to her, can you give an example of a time we have experienced or witnessed gender bias? How did it affect, your, uh, affect you professionally? What impact did it have on your job? The most over gender bias I have experienced in my career is pay discrimination. When I was offered less compensation for the same role as a male peer, I lost trust in my manager and the organization and my motivation took a hit. However, I chose to stay in the role because I didn't want to make a major transition at that point of time in my life. These are the uh, difficult trade-offs that women are forced to make. It is important to acknowledge that I navigate my career with significant privilege. Women who belong to uh, other marginalized communities face a disproportionately higher cost simply to exist in a corporate America. What is the most difficult lesson you have learned in your professional life? In what unexpected ways did you grow from it? I had to learn that it's not enough to put your head down and do a job and expect to see your career take off. You must also develop a strong professional brand and advocate for yourself within our organization. This political or evangelization work can feel intimidating or uncomfortable and as a result, tempting to overlook, but it is so important. I also had to learn that it is helpful to develop a long-term career perspective. 
So ideally, you develop a vision not only for immediate next step in your career, but also the second and third steps that you want to take. When you have a long-term vision, it is easier to identify the incremental steps that you need to take and it's also easier to feel more committed and confident in your career choices because you understand how they fit in to your big picture goals. What's one specific way you tend to your well-being and how do you encourage well-being among your staff? I like to shine a light on the supports I have in my life. Full-time paid childcare, support from nearby family, a dual income and dual caregiving household and investments in career and business coaches to support my growth and my sanity. In addition to paid support, I am working on asserting my needs and demands more confidently. Women are too often conditioned to be in service of others. I am reconditioning myself to prioritize my own needs and articulate what I need without guilt or shame and before I reach burnout. For teams I have led, I encourage well-being by modeling it. I confidently take my full PTO, personal time off and truly and visibly disconnect. I don't require explanations for vacation requests. I limit communication with my team outside of working hours. I trust my team to be autonomous and productive and hold people with rich lives outside of work. As a leader, the best thing I can do is walk the talk. What's one skill or behavior women can adopt to make their career path more successful and more manageable? As a coach, I encourage the women I work with to take a strategic planning approach to their career and treat it like they are running a business, their career business. In the business world, we are used to strategic planning activities like setting a mission or objective statement, defining annual goals and objectives, and convening for quarterly reviews to take track progress. However, very few women apply these tools and tactics to manage their own career. Do you have a mission statement for your career? Uh, do you commit to one or two career goals every year? Do you block time on your calendar to review and track against those goals? For many women, the answer is no. The result is, result is that women often feel like their careers are reactively happening to them and they consistently feel unsure if they are doing it right. When you take a strategic planning lens to your career, you have clarity and a greater control over your success. If you could snap your fingers and change one thing about workplaces, societal norms or public policies uh, that would most benefit women in the workforce, what would it be? Affordable care. Affordable care would provide a massive benefit to advancing women in the workforce. Uh, women continue to take on a, a disproportionate amount of caregiving, uh, whether as parents or as caretakers for aging, pa uh, aging parents and uh, family members. The absence of affordable care paired with disproportionate caregiving burden means that millions of women are forced to make suboptimal trade-offs and decisions between their career pursuits and their caregiving burdens. Affordable care would give so many women more choice and control over their career trajectory. With this, we have come to the conclusion of uh, this video. Hope you guys got a, a better understanding how to go about uh, building your uh, career being a woman, All right? I think it might, these ideas will help even, uh, even uh, men as well, I believe so, right? So you need to think big. So what are the things I learned from this article is that you need to think big and you have to believe in the creativity and resourcefulness, right? You have to believe and you have to, uh, you know, uh, have faith in you, right? Second understanding is you need to have a personal branding and advocate yourself within your organization right and uh, third uh, uh, learning i have uh, i will uh, i've learned from this article is that you need to have a you know you need to think your career as a strategic planning you need to have a, a mission and vision statement for your career and you need to have a periodic reviews on your you know goals and uh, intermediate steps right i hope you guys like this kind of videos that help you to become a better leader right so with that i'm signing off see you in next video